Floss tube number 22. It is a Saturday and I am back at work for the last three weeks. And it's been, it's gone very fast really because my flat last floss tube seems like only just really. Um, but it's already been three weeks and I have plenty to show you. So I'm trying to get back in the rhythm with work, uh, but I'm still stitching a lot because I, I love stitching. Uh, so I have some finishes, fully finishes, I have new starts, I have whips, I have the giveaway, so I'm going to announce the winners today somewhere in the floss tube of both the giveaways and the adoption piece. And then I have found more treasure, so if you are into Mirabilia, I will tell you all about that and um, show you what I have found. And... I have stitchy kindness, so that's quite a lot. But I'm going to start with, well, first with introducing myself. My name is Hanneke, and I am a Dutch stitcher on uh, YouTube. I use the, this channel just to show you about my cross-stitching. And I've been doing this now for over a year, so it's going really fast. I'm really enjoying it. I love my videos. I love the... Um, connection I get with the community. I like it that people are leaving comments and some of you really share something about yourself which f makes it feel like we're like we're interacting rather than me talking to a camera <laughs> which is which is still what it is but it doesn't feel like that anymore and that's really nice. Um, so yeah uh, that's that's me and um I would like to give a thank you, first of all, to Just Keep Stitching, Pam and Steph, because they have mentioned me on one of their floss tubes and they have given me the name Golden Floss Tuber for that, for that floss tube. And that was lovely. So thank you very much. And it has brought quite a lot of people over um, who um, didn't know my channel before and Last time I was hoping to get to 2,000 subscribers, but now I actually have more than 2,500. So it has really gone up really fast and that's lovely, you know, and I'm not necessarily doing this to get a lot of followers or viewers or subscribers or whatever, but it's nice to know that people enjoy the videos that I make and it's nice to interact again. I think that's the best part of it. So I'd like to say thank you to Pam and Steph. I really appreciate it. And um, I think I think that's the best part about this community. It's that we shout each other out, that we cheer each other on. I, I, I've said it before, Sarah, Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot, I think, is a champion in doing that. So she will always cheer people on. And um, I think that's such a good vibe to have as a community. So I will I will do that as well today uh, because usually I watch floss tubes and I just watch them on a loop and I don't necessarily have floss tubes that I always watch um, other than country stitches always and uh, um, just a few. But I found a new one and that is uh, Lost in Stitches Lisa and she has just done a finish parade and I would really recommend that to you if if you it's so many different kinds of 
stitches. They're all very, very well stitched and well put together, well finished. Um, so yeah, Lisa, I think you are doing great. And I think your designs also are very, very pretty. So uh, I just wanted to mention that on here. And um, like we do, I want to cheer you on. And uh, I wish you all the best. Um, I have, let's start with my cup. Now I have been hearing on all these different flush tubes about a flush tuber who is showing us how to make tea properly. And I have not found out who that is yet, uh, but I will find you because <laughs> I love tea. You can see, oh sorry, you can see, I don't, I can't do that, still cannot do that when I look at the screen. It's there. It's loose leaf tea. So I have about 12 loose leaf teas that I use um, throughout the day, basically. Not when I'm at work, because then it's just a hassle, but when I'm at home, I use loose leaf tea. And I put it in a little, a tiny little um, loose leaf tea teapot that I, a friend of mine gave me. And I found last time when my sister was here, that was the Saturday before this Saturday, uh, this gorgeous, gorgeous gold and white tea cup. And I shouldn't have put tea in it yet, but I have done. So we'll have to make it work. This is Antoinette from Royal Albert. So I collect Royal Albert pieces. And um, my collection is obviously this, uh, specifically as a, as a, as a full um, china set. And then I also collect all the lady cups that they have. And I, I say all, I don't think I can ever get to all because they have so much. I would have to get a second house to store them all. Um, but I do at the moment uh, purchase these secondhand shops, um, online secondhand hand vintage brocants. Uh, and uh, isn't that pretty? This is very pretty. So it's Antoinette, if you're interested. And I really love it when people say, oh, I've, I've got some of those cups. Um, or we have them in the attic. Or my mum used to have them. So, yeah, I love all this. All those comments and replies. And do let me know which ones you have, because there are so many of these. And it's lovely to get a few new names and then I can look them up and then uh, hopefully find them one day, because that's the... That's the thrill, isn't it? Right. Let's get started with proper stitching, because that's why we're here. This is a piece that I said last time, this is finished. Uh, but I also said something about wanting to put in a swing, because one of you had said to me, you can put in a swing. Uh, and I, I said last time, I don't know how to do that, so I'm saying it's finished. And then Terry contacted me, one of one of the viewers, and she said, I have a piece with a swing in it, and I think you can use this to put in your piece. So she sent me a, a little picture of that that section of the of the pattern. And I put in a little swing. It's only little, it's just a few stitches of blue. But now my heart is happy. <laughs> I was struggling with this pattern with the colours and for those of you who've watched previous floss tubes, I have changed colours on this one to sort of get the balance right. Um, I know right with me. I'm not saying it's right, but it, what feels right for me. Um, and this swing is perfect also because the the little, what's that called, strings, um, really tie in with this and with this. It just It just pulls it together nicely. So I was so happy with this, Terry, and um, I immediately stitched it in. And, and then I said, now it is finished. So I'm very happy with this. And ever since I put in the swing, I've had it hanging on one of those. Um, uh, chest, uh, I have a drawer, a chest of drawers. So I have it hanging sort of over the side. And when I didn't have the swing, I put it in a box because I thought I'm, it's not right. So I'll put it in the box. But now I've been looking at it because I think it's very, very pretty. 
It's funny, isn't it, what, what a little thing can do with a piece. And I love this about the community because I've been stitching it. Someone said, put in a swing. Someone else has a pattern of a swing. And here we are. So I love that. So thank you everyone who has been helping me with this piece. Now my next finish is a new finish and it is my magic needle kit. A roses for a needle woman. And this kit I have been working on for quite a while. Now I don't keep track of when I started a piece and how many hours I did on it um, or anything. I don't really keep track of anything. I just start it and I stitch it. <laughs> and I have got this thing in a hoop and I'm going to ask you what you think of that because I'm not sure. I think it's okay. I, I'm just not sure. So you can give me your opinion. Uh, but I do love the finished stitch, and I think this is a stunning piece. So roses for a needlewoman, all done and dusted. I love this. The colours are lovely. Now the kit comes with sort of a yellowish 14 count, and I have changed it to a white 16 count. Um, so that's... The only difference I made, and then I didn't do all the backstitching in the roses. It's not much anyway, but I don't think it needs it at all. So I've, I've left that out. I thought I didn't have enough of one of the greens. I was lying. I just, I'm not very good at keeping the threads neat. And I, I put it in the wrong, <laughs> wrong bit. So I had more than enough of all the colors, genuinely more than enough. So I am so happy with this finish. I think it's so pretty. Now, as you can see, I put it in a hoop, but I haven't finished it fully yet. So it's in the hoop just for me to see, because it's two hoops, as you can see. This is a hoop, and then it's a hoop around it. Um, but somehow I think it's nice. I want a round frame for this piece. And... Um, and this is affordable and I think I think it's nice but if if you disagree let me know uh, and if you have another idea then then I'm all ears uh, because as you can see I have not properly finished it yet but yeah that is a proper finish I've worked on this for quite a while you've seen it several times or many times is the word I should be using and Magic Needle is a lovely kit provider. They have very nice patterns. They are always in colour and symbol together. Um, they have gamma ruling threads, but it's very much like DMC. So for me, there is no difference, really. And um, they have a nice... <clears throat> one of you once mentioned the stitch path. And these always have a very nice stitch path. So you sort of always know where to go next. And that's um, that makes a stitch like this very enjoyable. And the colours. I mean, the colours are lovely. So beautiful. The pink cushion. At first, I was, wasn't sure whether I wanted to stitch it. But I'm so glad I did. Because isn't that cute? They have a series of this. So there are three more of this uh, well not exactly like this but they have a hoop and they have something in there that reminds you of stitching or sewing or knitting um, and I like the others as well but not as much as this one so I, I picked the right one and I, I'm not sure I will stitch the others at any point so that's a finish and um I will keep it like this for a little while longer to see if I want to fully finish it like this or whether I don't. <clears throat> then the next one, sorry, I'm starting to get a little bit of a cold because we went from 26 degrees uh, to, I think in a day, to 14 degrees. So it's been, it's one of those shifts in the weather where you are not properly dressed for the 14 degrees. 
<laughs> and it just uh, it's it's just prone to get colds at this time. The next one is also a finish. It's even a fully finish and it's also a new start. And I've been working quite a lot on this one. I had my birthday recently and it was a lovely day. I had I genuinely had a lovely day and uh, a lovely friend of mine came to work during my break at 12 o'clock with a warm apple pie still from the oven, home baked. And it was just such a lovely thing to do. And she is lovely. She is just the sweetest person you'll ever meet. She's a very sweet friend. And um, I have loved that apple pie. It, it was just completely baked for me and I could take it home. And it was just absolutely lovely. But we try to go out every holiday. We try to go out and do a trip together. And usually somewhere in the area. So this time we went cycling and we, we did some shopping. And I found... Um, I found some mirabilia um, patterns when I was um, out with her. Anyway, her birthday is soon, so I, I knew I had to do something nice for that <laughs> because she deserves it. And she only recently bought a camper van, and she's very happy about that. So I thought, why don't I stitch something related to that? And um, we had all these dreams about starting a little coffee shop in a, in a camper van or in a caravan. And it, it was going to be lovely. And she was going to bake the cakes because obviously she knows how to bake cakes. Um, and I was going to do cross-stitch workshops in that cafe. So we have it all sorted out. <laughs> um, but anyway, I looked on Etsy and I found this cute little pattern. I will put it on the screen first because I've made a few changes. I think one main change, which is the color of the caravan. My friend likes blue, so I've changed it to a blue. I think 517 and 518 I changed it to. So this is my fully finish. And I am so pleased with this little piece. It's bright, it's jolly, and it is just a lovely, lovely little caravan. Caravanning days or caravan days are happy days, and she will agree with that. It's not a camper van. I appreciate that. I think she will see through that and accept it. Um, but yeah, I think this is a lovely little piece. It's by Little Dovey. Little Dove. I had it on my phone and because I, I knew I was going to forget when I'm here, because that always happens, littledovedesigns.co.uk. Little Dove Designs. I think I got it from Etsy. Um, isn't that cute? And I stitched on this, I think, for about two weeks, two and a half maybe. So I've done quite a lot on this one, because it is quite stitch heavy with the caravanning. It's, it's completely, you know, full... The window is half stitches, uh, but other than that, it's all full stitches. And I think very, very cute. I'm sorry about the glare because I always frame with glass. And this is yet again a frame from Action. It's where I usually get my frames. They are two euros. They're very cheap and they're very pretty. They're still very nice. Uh, my back is not very nice. I have to find a solution for this before I give it to her. So I think I have to do something either with fabric or um, with paper. But I do want to keep this because I want her to be able to have it stand up. So that's a bit of a pain. I'm not sure how to sort that. So if you are all of, if you know anything how to how to fix this, then be my guest. Let me know. And then I will give this to her soon. I think it's very cute and I think she'll be happy with it. Lovely little stitch. Very easy stitch. Very easy stitch. It's um, quite blocky, if you will. And, um, and sometimes that's very nice because when I was back at work, I was tired. Um, so it's nice to have a blocky stitch rather than a stitch where you have to change your color a lot or 
where it's it's a difficult stitch and you have to do a lot of counting. This one was none of that. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. And I'm going to move on with my new starts. I have three new starts. I said last time I will do some new starts um, before I go back to work. I did two of them and then I did one birthday start for myself. So this first one was a, a start that I did just before I went back on um, back to work. Now I was watching a floss tube by someone and she was using, I'm sorry, I've forgotten who it was. Uh, she was using 121, um, which is a variegated, and you can't see the color properly at all at the moment. That's because of my lighting. But this is a beautiful Delft's blue. I think that's how they call it. It's a beautiful deep blue, and it has shades of blue. Um, and so I, she was working with that, and I thought, that's very, very pretty indeed. Uh, and I was, I thought I would have to buy that one day. And then I looked in my stash, and I saw that I had two of these. And quite a while ago, I found 127 skeins in a bag in a second-hand shop for 10 euros. So I still sometimes find this a strand of floss thinking, I didn't know I had that. And this is one of those. And I have a green... Um, a variegated floss as well that's very pretty but I decided to use the blue because I knew from the other floss tube that that's very nice and then a pattern from ink circles and I thought that's gonna you know a nice a nice match so I will put this uh, on the screen the pattern by ink circles I'm not sure about the name at the moment I'm sorry I found it on Etsy it's a pdf that you can just download uh, after you've purchased it and I am stitching it on 20 count Ada White. And uh, like I said, I'm using the 121. I think this will become a Bisco New. So they have a few more of these small ones. So I might make two of them and then make them into a Bisco New. Uh, but we'll see. I like the Bisco New as a finish, I think it's very nice. Now this is just beautiful. I don't, I don't position the colors anywhere specifically. I just stitch and I just stitch the way I want to stitch and I, I'll see what it turns out. And so, so far, I think it's giving a lovely effect and it's um, just a lovely stitch. One, two, one. This is from the DMC range. <clears throat> And this fabric is a 20 count Ada white and I cut it out from the piece that I at some point was working on a massive heaven and earth designs. And up until now I kept it intact thinking maybe I want to go back to it but I have genuinely uh, discontinued that one um, because I've been cutting out pieces like this to, uh, to start stitching other things on it. And I love the 20 count and one strand. It is starting to become my favorite uh, for certain patterns. There are others where it's nice to have the, the, the thickness of the two threads. Uh, but with this one, I think it's um, beautiful, beautiful. And when I'm traveling, I can't do 20 count. It, it's, um, especially in the train or in the bus, it's way too bumpy to uh, have, a, have a 20 count to work on. The next one is my birthday start. Now I saw this one. This is one of those pieces where I see it, I buy it, I start it. It's all in one go. I even go to the shop to get my flosses the very same day because I just love it. Now they have two pieces out and I'm gonna, again, look at my phone because it's on here. Um, the one I'm going to stitch is pastoral. I think that's how you say it, pastoral, not sure. And it's from Roland Designs. And I found it on Etsy. And they are sort of putting old patterns that have been hand painted uh, into PDF patterns. 
And um, basically what a lot of people do with old samplers, they do with these kinds of patterns. So I, I saw this, I fell in love with it, and I started it. Now they also have another one that I absolutely love, and it's Astoria. And I will put a picture of that on here as well. And it is stunning. So these two pieces I will make at some point, And I've started with pastoral. And it's only a small start. So we won't focus on that too long. Uh, but it's on an 18 count, I've decided. 18 count white. And I have done the first few pieces. And I'm starting on one of the roses. So yeah, I was I fell in love with that pattern. I thought that is beautiful. And um, the colors are beautiful. So I thought it's a nice birthday start and my aim will be to have it finished my next birthday. So I have a bit to go. And it's not big, not big at all. I think it comes to about here. So it's it's not, it's long, but it's not necessarily high. So, you know. Happy, happy with that start. Love it. Then I had another new start. And this one I showed last time because when I went with my friend cycling and we went to a secondhand shop, I found all this stuff and I found um, Marjolein Bastet patterns as well. Marjolein Bastet is a, I think she's Dutch or she's Belgian. I always forget. Um... But she is a designer and there are cups uh, and um, china sets and calendars and diaries. There's so much stuff from her. But she also has um, cross stitch patterns. And these are very old and you see them in a lot of secondhand shops stitched up. So you don't see the pattern, but you see the, the pieces stitched up. Um, so, But I found the pattern only for a euro. So that's barely anything. And I like this pattern. I think it, it is timeless, really, because it's still, even after all these years, it's very, very pretty. And um, But I was looking at this thinking, we have seen this pattern in so many places already. Wouldn't it be nice to take a gamble and change some colours and change, just change it up a little bit? So I've been starting to do that, and I'm not necessarily changing uh, the color palette, so I have all the colors that are listed, um, but I am changing the way the colors are, uh, especially around the flowers. So, for instance, you can see here that the the uh, border, the thin border, is sort of a wheat yellow, um, and I have gone for green. And then you can see the lowest row is light yellow and I am stitching it blue. So there are all these little changes that I aim to make um, and they don't have to be big but just to get it a slightly different outlook, make it slightly unique. Um, not saying that this isn't beautiful because I think this is beautiful uh, but because it's been stitched like this so many times I want to do it slightly differently. So this is my start. And I'm going to hold it next to it. So you can see the differences. So the very yellow uh, base of the, of the pattern, it has a very different outlook already with my green. Because that's much um, louder. It's a louder color. And then the blue at the bottom, I really like that choice. I think it's very nice. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure whether because there's nothing left here, just a few different color pieces, stitches. So I'm thinking about moving either the butterfly or stitching another bird down here. Now that would be a bit weird because it seems to be built up from ground to to sky. Birds up there. But I do want to stitch something here because it seems a bit boring to have all that just one colour. So I'm trying to figure it out. So that's my piece at the moment. 
and this is the pattern. Now I don't expect to change anything with the flowers in the middle, um, but it will it will mostly be about uh, around it where I will make the changes. And for instance, another change that I'm considering is the corners at the top. I don't necessarily like those. They're just one color with then dots. So I might want to stitch this one with the stripes at the top as well. The same goes for the middle one with the wheat. They have dots in that. I'm not necessarily wanting the dots, so I might want to change that. So it's all those little things. I think this will remain as is because I quite like that one and I like the green. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just seeing how it goes. And I've decided it, it is, I'm allowed to fail on it. So that gives me a little bit more space to just go for it. So that's all my new starts. And I will now move to a giveaway. I decided to give away my, um, uh, actually, I'm, I decided to give away this piece. I found this one when I was shopping with my friend in that secondhand shop. Um, and it's from Black Swan and it is Sweetheart Rose. So this is secondhand. Uh, so it has a price sticker on there for two euros. That was from that shop. Uh, and it is, um, it's neat, it doesn't smell, but it doesn't look new, new. So that's the, the piece. So this I put in there for the word swan. And this is going to, and I'm going to just spell it. K-A-D-E, Kate. Um, Kate, but then with a D. 1699. That is the winner of this piece. So congratulations. And I hope you will enjoy stitching this one. Now, should you finish it one day, please send me a picture so we can all enjoy your results on this piece. Um, you can find my email address in the description box. And there you can just send me uh, an email, say that you've, um, you are the lucky one and um, that you would uh, like me to send it to wherever you are. So give me your address. Um, so again, K-A-D-E 1699. Congratulations. So that's the first giveaway. Let's move on to a few whips and some stitchy kindness. I'll do that at the same time because I'm gonna show you the art mini that I'm working on. And last time I told you about the art minis I was doing, I showed you the ones that I had finished already. And um, I told you about Nikki Patton and I have done a million times on my channel because I really like her work. She is on Etsy and she has a lot of patterns out, including a lot of art minis and some landscapes. So I'm making both of those. Anyway, she contacted me, sent me an email and said, I've seen your floss tube. Thank you very much. And uh, she has given me for free a hundred art minis. So she has these packs and she has sent me uh, the pack of a hundred art minis. So I almost cried when I got that. I thought, are you kidding me? It's just, you know, that's so kind. That's just tremendous. So I will keep stitching these. I, I still have a few anyway uh, lined up. Um, but there are several in that hundred pack that I still want to do and that I didn't have yet. And so I was, I was very, very touched and honored that she sent me that. Uh, and we will continue looking at those art minis. Now the art minis, and I always say this when I put them up, they come together when you put in the final stitches. So when you're working on it, you might think this is not happening. This is not very pretty. Uh, but it will come together. So uh, the one I'm working on, and again, I'm looking at my phone to figure out, which is Grand Canal. And the artist is Monet. And I am working on it. Now, when I look at it on screen, I'm thinking, yes, that's happening. 
Uh, when I was looking at it this morning, when I was stitching it, I thought, I'm not sure. But this is happening. Isn't that pretty? I have sung Nikki's praises before and I will continue to do that because I think this is so tremendous. The way, I mean, this is 50 by 60 stitches, so it's small. And yet, it is so pretty. So I can only recommend these stitches. And I think this one is um, lovely. It's quite a new one. It's one of the newer ones she put out. And um, I thought I'd like that one. This will get one of the golden little frames that I have. I think that will go beautifully with sort of the golden that you see here. So yeah, I'm um, I'm very happy with this piece. I'm over 75%, so this one will be a finish next time. And it will be a fully finish because I can easily frame this in the little frames that I have. So I'm so pleased. So there we are. Now, last time I also decided to give away uh, the wave, which is a piece by Nikki Patherin. And I will also share the winner of that. And I think that was staying in the Netherlands because she said something about um, at, at Veluwe Meer. Uh, and it is going to Greta. Salverda um, 2321. So congratulations very much. You will get a PDF. So this is a, um, obviously a, a physical pattern needs to go in the post, but the wave is a um, PDF pattern. So I will send you that. So again, Greta Salverda, Greta Punt Salverda 2321. So congratulations. And for you the same, once you've stitched it, we'd love to see it. Right, let's have another cup, a sip of tea. For my very, very pretty cup. Next one is also a Nikki pattern. It is a landscape piece. She has four landscape, well, she has more landscape pieces, but these are sort of a set of four with similar colors. And I've stitched one of those for my sister. And I'm currently stitching the one, one of the pink ones for myself. And they are 100 by 100, so they are not very big. And as always, they are very nice to stitch. And I am working away on it. Yeah, I love these pieces. They are so fun. And they're easy to put in a hoop as well. So they're an easy finish. It's not expensive. Um, and the stitch is so lovely. The colours are very, very nice. And I stitched this on a 16 count. It's, it can be quite blocky in areas and then it can be a bit more... Um, it's never confetti, but a bit more colour heavy in other areas. Uh, but it's uh, it's very, very nice. I love these pieces. When I made a one for my sister, I, I genuinely liked that one and thought, I, you know, I should make another one for me. And I'm glad that I started it. And I'm going quite fast on it. Uh, so it is it is one of those stitches where you can, in, in a good sitting, do easily 500 stitches. So very happy with that start. This little needle minder is from Jessica Stitches. Uh, on Etsy and YouTube. She's also on YouTube. So there we are. Progress. Then one that I haven't shown you for quite a while. It is 48 tiles from Atelier Tiffany, I think. Uh, but do check the description box if you are interested in this piece because I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and I got this one on Etsy as well. The needle miner was a gift from a viewer, Margaret. I think it suits this piece perfectly. And um, I'm stitching this on 18 count and I used two strands of floss. And I did three of these. And then quite a lot of the outside again. Now I have two more to go on here and that's the top of the piece. And I love this. 
again, this is one that will be that will build. And I can already imagine it being halfway and it being just stunning. So we will just keep going on it. It is one color apart from those little blocks in the middle that I use uh, a dark red 777, seven, seven, I think I'm using. And then I'm using 732 or 731 for the for the green. And all of that is an old version because all of that was in that stash that I bought for, for Tenna. So um, there was a lot of this color in there. And it, this is a perfect, um, perfect way to put it to good use. And these are so lovely to stitch on an evening after a busy day at work because it is very symmetrical. So it, it's very good for my mind <laughs> to get into that. And it's also nice in the train. I took this one in the train with me. I had to go to Rosendaal, which is about an hour away. And um, this was a nice thing to stitch. And once you have the hang of it of the middle piece anyway, you can just leave the pattern for what it is. The same goes for all the outside. I could just stitch all those outside boxes and not do any fill in if I don't want to look at a pattern for a while. So it's just perfect. But it's love. Look at that. It's lovely. I'm very happy, <laughs> very happy with this one. It's very different again from other pieces that I'm doing. But I like to um, do different things. I like to do different things in my work. I like to do different things in my stitching. It's just the Dutch saying, verandering van spijs doet eten, is very much um, I'll try to translate that. Changing your food uh, means that you keep eating. <laughs> uh, oh, this one is um, when I started and, and there was quite a struggle with this one. This is uh, Croqueta Gogo. -Go. I started this last time and it says on the pattern white. So I thought, which white do you want? And I went with blank because I thought it's a it's an autumny piece, so blank will be fine. And then I stitched with blank, and I have that with another piece as well, where when I stitch it, it looks white. And then the next day, when I start to stitch with a new strand of that white, that seems to be whiter than the white that's actually on the piece. So it seems to get dark and dirty looking, grimy looking, very quickly. And I got to a point where I was just not loving this stitch anymore. I was thinking to discontinue it. Uh, but I love this stitch. That's the problem. I love it. And um, I thought, it can't be that I, I suddenly have lost my love for this piece. So um, I decided, and I'd stitched quite a lot of white already, decided to all take it all out. So I, I think two or three evenings, I did a lot of frogging. All of this I had already stitched. I'd even gone all the way over there with the white, so took it all about. Then I'd already done all of this and most of this had to take all of it out. All the white in here had to be taken out. The thing here, oh, it's just frustrating. Um, but I stitched it again, um, most of it now, with a B5200. And I'm liking it better. So it, it was a good choice. And uh, yeah, blank, I don't use blank very often, but I made one purchasing mistake when I went to Pipo's once. I thought I had B2 52 100, but I had blank. So I bought four skeins or something. But I hardly use it because I have I, I don't I don't really like it. Anyway, this one now has um Proper white, white, and I'm happy with that. It's such a cute pattern, but it's more stitch heavy than I thought when I started it. It takes a lot of stitching, but that's okay because this, the lovely colors, and it's 18 count, two strands of floss. It's just cute, it's a cute scenery. So, yeah. And I love autumn. Autumn is my very favorite part of the year. 
So I'm very happy that we are moving into autumn. This little needle minder I got from, I think, Garen and so, which is a Dutch shop. I usually get some of the basics there. The next one I did was Kaleidoscope by Vistas. This was a pattern where I asked her to put some patterns together to create this one. And she thought that was a good idea, came back to me immediately, and here we are stitching it. Now I have been, it's difficult to see compared to last time, but basically this row and here I've been, I've been working. And um, I didn't do this in a train. This is my travel piece normally. Uh, but I, this was on the break of the pages and I was struggling a bit doing that in a train because I had to hold two pages. So I, um, I did this at home a couple of evenings. I did a few blocks each time. And just to get a bit of, um, to get over that break. And especially here, I can just keep going again uh, for the second half. I love it. This is one of those that will grow slowly. It's very similar to um, Carolyn Manning patterns. So yeah. It's um, it's not difficult. This could very much be a beginner stitch because it's just blocks, basically, or, or triangles or shapes. Um, but I don't mind doing a beginner stitch. I think the, the, the finished result will be beautiful. And um, I'll just continue. There you go. I got into the yellows. I like that. The dark blues are not really my thing, so I'm quite happy to move into more green yellow areas. I almost made a mistake because I thought I'll put this one away and then I thought, oh, there's purple here and pink. So I was about to start stitching with the pink and then I realized that was on that page sort of here. <laughs> so I was... Um, I was about to make a big mistake and having to do frogging, but uh, yeah, glad I didn't. So then I did put it away because I'd, I'd had enough. But this one is um, moving along nicely. About a quarter done, I guess. A bit, a bit less, maybe. The next piece is my landmarks. A lot of you who watch my channel for the first time comment on my landmarks because it is, I guess it's unique and the way I'm doing it. It is a pattern on Etsy from, I don't remember who from, Teeny Weeny Cross Stitch. Check my description box. And um, I stitched one more, as I do. So the next row is happening. And these on top are the cliffs of Dover. The white cliffs of Dover. So now it is starting to get too big for this screen. I like that. It's very, very pretty. especially when you look at it like this. So the, the thing that is starting to annoy me is the fabric. It's starting to get a bit grimy and dirty. Um, and I keep arming and eyeing whether I want to do the full uh, 56 that I intended to do on this, on this piece of fabric or whether I want to wash it in between or whether I shouldn't uh, or whether I want to, want to stop after this row is finished. I keep arming and eyeing because the fabric does does feel dirty. Um, so if, if you have experience of washing your Ada in between, of during your stitching basically, what's your experience with that? And would you advise it? Oh, see again, I always go the wrong way. That's Dover. I, I enjoyed stitching that one. The water is a little bit greenish, so that's a slightly new colour to this piece. And the next one I've decided to do 
is a piece that it has very dark blue in. So it's it's a nighttime piece. So where the sky, sorry, itchy nose, where the sky here is sort of um, a salmony, the next one will be sort of dark night sky. So that will be a slightly different piece, but there are there are several of those in the full stack. So I'm I'm intending to put them sort of throughout the piece. So in the end, that will pull the colors together again. Uh, so yeah, the first one will go uh, will go right there. I can see if I can I can always put it um, uh, on the screen anyway. Uh, but it's this one. I will do next. So it's very dark, uh, and the, I think the darkest blue is very similar to the blue in the uh, in the piece of Mecca. So yeah, question about the washing: Should I? Should I? Can I wash it in between, or should I not? And just accept the fact that it's that it's getting dirty. <laughs> It's just because I work on it quite a lot. It's a piece that I grab quite a lot. Right, I've got two more pieces to show you and then um, we'll move into my um, adoption piece. The next one is by UB Designs. UB Designs has modern patterns. This is Rot trifft Schwarz, uh, which is red meets black in English. And I am moving along on this piece. So the last time you've seen it, I was working on those butterflies. So I finished the butterflies and filled in all the background and then stitched the black piece next to it with the, with the red flower in it. And that means I have two more blocks to do, which is this one. Well, these two basically, obviously. Uh, and that's moving along nicely. Now, those are big blocks, though, so it'll probably take another three floss tubes before this is finished. Uh, but it is getting there and it is pretty. It is pretty. It's one of those pieces that when I started it, I didn't know it was going to love it this much. I don't like red, you know. Isn't that funny? And on this piece, I love it. I love it. I look forward to stitching this sort of cone. There's a, a deep red cone. So I look forward to stitching that. Uh, I think most of the black is done. So the areas that still need doing are more checkered like this. And so they're, they have a softer background. Lovely piece. Lovely piece and, and, you know, I think well over 75% now. So doing good. I like UB design. I have, I have one, sorry, still an itchy nose. I have one piece in my stash where it's all those little roses, very tiny. And I'm working on one as well with um, a Blue Horizon, which is also very nice, but I haven't stitched on it lately. Uh, because I do now have quite a stash of um, of um, uh, pieces, and I like that. I like being able to show you different things in different floss tubes. So Moon Deer, for instance, which is one of my favorites, I haven't stitched on it, um, and that's okay. I like being able to um, to work on different things and show you different things as well. Now my next piece is by Kathy uh, from Gracewood Stitches. And this is a um, a big stitch, but I am loving it. And I have stitched the fourth row completely. So I stitched this on 18 count of some sort of blue. And several of you have asked me about the blue. Which color is it? I don't know. I went to a fair in Belgium last year. and. Um, I think that fair is again in November. I saw somewhere on Facebook, so I might go again. Uh, anyway, they had all these uh, fabrics everywhere uh, in see-through bags, no name on it, just the price. So I don't know what color this is or who the, um, what the brand is or anything. 
but it is a very nice color, I have to admit. It's sort of jeans blue, I would call it. And I stitched this with one strand of Soie the whitest white. Now I bought quite a lot of white from different shops. Some of them turned out to be yellowish. So I am struggling a little bit where I'm going to get all the rest of the floss for this. Uh, because this is drinking floss. It is flying through it. Luckily one of you was kind enough to send me her leftover skein. And that is a proper white white, so I can use that one. So I have a bit to go, uh, but I need to find a shop that, that has the white white that doesn't have a yellowish undertone because it is so visible. I started to stitch with one of those yellowish strands. It's so visible on this because, you know, it's completely white. It's supposed to be white. But isn't that pretty? I am loving it. It was quite an easy row, this one. Uh, the next one will be similar to this, but, but a little smaller, that style of stitching. And, um, and then I'm at the middle band, so it, I am moving up nicely. Uh, but this will take time and a lot of love, and I'm happy to give it. Yeah, love this piece. <laughs> Right, that's all my stitching, the pieces I've been working on. That's all of that. But we have a bit more to chat about. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the Mirabilia. So I, like I said, I went to that shop. We went cycling, blah, blah, blah. And um, I found reaching, touching the autumn sky, which is a very rare Mirabilia. I didn't know that when I bought it. Uh, but it's a very rare one and um, I have found a home for it someone has bought it and uh, I'm very happy to know that she is going to stitch it uh, so that's uh, that's the best part because these things need to be stitched because they're so beautiful um, so I was very happy to uh, to find it a good home it has been sent off to I think to Denmark is where it was going and um, yeah very happy about that but then I thought can I find more of those? Because people like these and again, they should be stitched. So I went on to all those Dutch secondhand online marketplaces. So we have Marktplatz and Vinted and all those uh, online apps basically. And I found in total, I found five of them relatively cheap, which is, I think the ones I have here were 15 euros each. And the ones I am still having in the posts uh, at some point are 18 euros each. So that's very cheap for these pieces. And they are all out of print because, I don't know, and they, they had been on there because I checked. They had been on that app being posted for over two years. So, um, yeah, I thought I, sh I shall purchase them and then I shall... Um, um, resell them to the community so people who really want these out of print patterns they can stitch it because again they are beautiful but there are a few here where I'm thinking maybe I should stitch them myself because they are pretty um, the first one I found was this one and this one I put on my Etsy shop uh, I have an Etsy shop I'm um, at some point I designed a little piece myself and I've decided to put all these pieces on there as well. I just put a price on it. The first buyer gets it. So this was one that I thought was very cute. Uh, Crystal Christmas. So this one I found. It, I, I think it's a bit... Um, when I saw it stitched, it looked better than it does on the picture. But it's very cute. Very Christmassy, obviously. Crystal Christmas. Uh, so this one is currently on my Etsy shop and you can find the link to my Etsy shop in my description box uh, and uh, you're welcome to it. Now the next two I'm going to show you are not yet on my Etsy shop. That's because I am deciding whether I want to stitch these 
And this first one I found is Adia, the Garden Fairy. I think this is beautiful. And I'm not a fairy kind of person at all. I just think this is very pretty. Reminds me of angels. And I have a... I'd love to see an angel. So yeah, that one's very pretty. Adia, the garden fairy. And then the next one I found, um, this was all from the same person who had it all sort of on her, on her vintage shop. Uh, is Summer Queen. Now I learned that Autumn Queen is the most rare. I didn't find Autumn Queen either. But I did find Summer Queen. And this, I think, is again very elegant, very pretty. Um, but this might be one that I will be selling. So I might put this one on my Etsy shop as well. So if you're interested in this, have a look because I might do that today. So by the time that my video is out, you might find it there. Now in the post, I have another one I don't know the name of that I really like. So it's a lady in a yellow dress, sort of smelling a rose. And uh, it's very elegant. I've forgotten the name. And I also found um, Queen of Peace, which again, I think is very rare. I will sell that one because it's not my preferred one. I can't stitch all of them. So I will sell Queen of Peace once I have it. So again, keep an eye on my Etsy shop in the coming weeks because it will come up there if you're interested. Um, so it's probably going to be this one and this one and Queen of Peace. And then I will probably uh, think about stitching one of the other ones. I think if I'd have to choose between this one and the other one with the lady that I don't know the name of, it'd probably be the other one. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye out. If you're interested in these pieces, I, my Etsy shop will, will have them at some point. Um, and you are very welcome to, to have them. And I hope you'll stitch them. And if you do stitch them and you're finished at some point, I'd love to see it. And I'd love to show it on the costume because, you know, it's nice to see what other people stitch. I like that segment that Sarah does where she sends, where she shows pictures of, um, of viewers who have finished something. And I don't want to be a copycat, but I think that's a really nice thing to do. Uh, so I'll, I'll think about doing that. Oh, my giveaway. Let's do that first. My uh, adoption giveaway. I'd almost forgotten about that one. And this one was very popular. <laughs> I, I didn't think so. I thought if I can find one person who would be happy to stitch this, I'd, I'd be surprised, really. But there were quite a lot of you who wanted to stitch this. And it's a lovely little piece on even weave. I have started it. I have stitched the water, basically, which is all one strand of floss. And then the rest of it is up to someone else. And I will tell you who that is. That is Carol Lammers 5114. So this is going to Carol Lammers 5114. I, I think you said in your comment that you are from Dutch Heritage. So that's very nice. So I hope you will enjoy this. And for all the winners, um, please go to my description box. You will find my email address there. Then send me an email um, with at least your address. Uh, where you can, uh, where you want me to send it to, and I will put it in the post, and it will come to you, except for the one who is getting the wave, which is Greta, Greta, could also be Greta, I don't know. Greta is the Dutch pronunciation. Um, anyway, you're getting a PDF. So congratulations to Carol. And thank you all for being a part of that, because, uh, again, it's a lovely part of the community, giving each other presents. And this is, a, this is a lovely way for me to give back for all of you watching. Um, then someone decided to return, to return the kindness and send me a present. 
And there is no need for that, obviously. Uh, but it is so kind when people do. And yesterday I came home after a long week and um, it was lovely to find this little package on my doorstep and to, um, to take my time opening it and finding way too much, really. This is too much for a present, but um, it's just too kind. Um, I sent uh, Michelle um, my leftover lilac threads. Those of you who've been watching me for a while, I did lilacs by Magic Needle, and um, I had quite a few left over. She started lilacs as well, and she said at some point, I am concerned about running out of the floss. And I said, well, I can send you my leftovers because I'm not using those. So I did. And in return, she said, I want to send you something back, which is kind and was not needed, uh, but it's very kind. And she went to Colour and Cotton. Now, I know Colour and Cotton from Hearsay, but uh, obviously I've never been there because uh, I, I don't know how to get there. Um, Anyway, she has spoiled me. The first thing she got was this lovely little needle miner, which is perfect. I'm running out of needle miners with, with all the patterns I have. And this is such a cute one. So thank you for that one. It's also a strong one, which is important. Then she got me a range of floss and one piece of fabric. And this is the fabric, which is from Colour and Cotton. It's the Coloured Dove and it's 20 count Ada. And this is beautiful. Absolutely stunning colour. I think this is beautiful. It's dark, but it's soft. It's very natural. The Ada is very soft as well. I'm used to having slightly stiff Ada, but this is soft. Um, it's already, whatever this is called, I don't have to put tape on it because someone has already sewn it. I mean, ha that's perfect. Yeah, I think this is a beautiful colour. It has a slight, um, it's not one colour solid. Uh, so, you know, that makes it beautiful, extra beautiful. And it's, um, oh, obviously, one slash eight, an eighth of a yard, which I don't know what a yard is because that's very American. Uh, but it's very pretty. And I'm very happy with this. And I'm looking now for what I can stitch on this. Um, and I have got several ideas. So <laughs> I'll find something. And then she bought me all this floss, which, again, was not needed. But it is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. She asked me at some point, which colours do you like? So I sent her a selection of colours that I liked. They've added some to it. Um, so I've got two greens, two purples, pinks, sorry, two browns and two blues. And I think this is a stunning palette. And this morning I was already looking at what can I stitch with this? And it will obviously be on 20 count because then I can then I can spread out this thread over as many pieces as I want. Uh, so yeah, I, I will stitch this only on 20 count so I can use one strand rather than two. So stunning. I think these are beautiful. I now have more and more of these special flosses in, in my stash. Uh, because I've been looking in several places to find them. So I have Wigs Dye Works. I do my Moon Deer on that. Now I have Colour and Cotton. I have um, Gentle Art for the roses I do for my needle box. There's one Gentle Art in that. And I have one more. I can't remember. can't remember. But I think I showed that last time because I, w I went to Belgium to get them. So, yeah, these colours are uh, Colour and Cotton, Tree Lot, Fritz, Flamingo, Light Coral, Top Soil, Land of Snow, Locomotive and Hot Cocoa. So this is just stunning and I will find a pattern for this. I saw a Carolyn Manning pattern. 
um, she has a garden series, I think, or a flower series. And one of those, I thought this would be stunning on that. So I might start one of those, but I have to calculate whether I'd have enough threads to do that. Um, happy to calculate that. I will figure it out. Um, I, had, I have a pattern already uh, with um, It Is Well, uh, with My Soul, uh, by Swing, Sweet Wing Studio, which is very nice. So I might want to use this for that. So I have all these patterns uh, that I could use. So I will think about it for a little bit and then um, then make a decision. But Michelle, this is too kind. If I can ever repay you or uh, return the favor, let me know. And um, I think that concludes my flush tube. I want to thank you all again for watching. Um, if you're not yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe, um, like the video. I love the comments. It's it's a way for me to, like I said, not just speak to the camera, but speak to people behind the camera. Uh, I, I really enjoy that. And um, if you have any ideas for the floss tube, anything you'd like to see, let me know. I'm most happy to, to see what I can do. Again, if you're interested in the Mirabilia's, um, check my Etsy shop. Uh, they will be available there at some point, And then I just mail them anywhere. So that's not a problem. Um, so congratulations to all the winners. Get in touch with me with my email address. It's in the description box. And then I wish you all a lovely three weeks again, probably three weeks. And then I'll be back with another floss tube. So happy stitching to everyone. And I'll see you next time.